It's the final game in week 22 here on the British Basketball League YouTube channel, and it promises to be an absolute belter as the Caledonia Gladiators host the Newcastle Eagles. This is a huge game at a critical time in the season for both these teams as the battle for seeding supremacy hots up at the top of the table. It may be 2-0 to the Eagles in this series so far this season, but that means nothing as the playoff implications become critical. Tahir Hajat and former GB legend Dan Clark have this one for you. Game two of two on this Mothering Sunday British Basketball League Championship action. The Caledonia Gladiators taking on the Newcastle Eagles. Tip off around the corner 5 p.m. to start this game. My name is Tahir Hajat joined alongside the legend that is Dan Clark. And of course, we had one game earlier where the Bristol Flyers destroyed the Leicester Riders. Sorry if you didn't know that result. But uh, yeah, looking forward to this game, though, because on paper, it could be a close matchup. Yeah, as you said, the great first game for the Bristol Flyers. But this game could be amazing to hear, if you're being honest with you. Caledonia missing a few guys. Newcastle at full strength. Can they get that win on the road that they're looking for? Well, Caledonia fared well against the London Lions. Uh, a disappointing loss for them, but, but they will line up exactly the same. Brinston, Onwas, Clifton Moore Jr., Lucas Paliza, Mike Bothwell and Quade Green, the starting five for the Gladiators. And for the Newcastle Eagles coming off victory against the Manchester Giants, they line up as follows. Darius Defoe, Ricky McGill, Jordan Johnson, Larry Austin Jr. and Taj Green. Great to see a fully fit roster for the Newcastle Eagles in this game. Let's take a look at some individual talent. This man right here, Quade Green. Yeah, quite a green. Breath of fresh air since he's joined the Caledonia, Caledonia Gladiators. As we see there, 23 points per game. He is a pocket rocket. You know, he can really get going. Really looking forward to seeing that matchup with Jordan Johnson today. Well, guaranteed bucket. You know what to expect from him, Jordan Johnson from the Eagles. Yeah, Jordan Johnson, he is the motor of the Newcastle Eagles. Every time he plays well, they win basketball games. Strong, powerful, quick, explosive. You know, he can really get it done in many different ways. Really looking forward to seeing this matchup between two small point guards. Well, at times, people have criticised this Newcastle Eagles team, but Mark Stutzel's side sit fourth in the British Basketball League Championship, ready to take on the Gladiators and challenge them for third position. Tip-off's just around the corner. We'll be back with you very shortly.
welcome to game two of this wonderful Sunday here for the British Basketball League. Chris Dogs, Tom Moneyman and Simon Unsworth, your officials for this one as the Caledonia Gladiators ready at home to take on the Newcastle Eagles. We're just having uh, a ceremonial ball tip from one of the sponsors which does not count towards the actual game. Uh, but they'll do this tip-off, and then the, the referees will do their own. There we go. Tip-off with a golden ball. Are we going to be playing with a golden ball at All-Stars? That'd be cool. Going for it again. Yo, we're going to go again. What's happening here? Oh, OK. Well, I guess the referee said that first one wasn't legal. you got to go again. <laughs> oh, dearie me. Well... The Caledonia fans are on their feet, making noise as they welcome the Newcastle Eagles. My name's Ty Hadjar alongside Dan Clark. This is the real tip. And that's knocked out of bounds for the Newcastle Eagles to have the first possession of the game. Newcastle Eagles with a resounding victory against the Manchester Giants at home at the Virtu Motors Arena in their last outing this weekend. Looking to go two and two and challenge the Caledonia Gladiators for their third positioning in the lead. And as I mentioned earlier on, a lot of people around, fans and more, would have been criticising the Newcastle Eagles for their lack of dominance, should we say, in this season. But, you know, there's very few times where they've had a fully fit roster, Dan. Yeah, 100%. You know, it's great, it's great timing for them coming towards the end of the season that they're, they've got everyone back fit now, you know, Will Neighbour and... Spencer had operations, as we see. Perfect start for Caledonia there. Lucas Paliza knocked down. But yeah, it's going to be exciting to see what Newcastle are really capable of doing, you know, running into the end of the season. And of course, they have got four all-star players. March 17th at the Copper Box Arena. Their fans voting in their droves to ensure that the Newcastle Eagles are well presented there. Larry Austin Jr. Uh, Ricky McGill, Taj Green, Jordan Johnson, all on the all-star rosters. Make sure you scan the QR code to buy your tickets now if you want to be there with us at the Copper Box Arena. And if you can't, live on Sky Sports, there's a turnover here from Bothwell, misreading the cut of green. And I was fortunate to do the Caledonia Gladiators game against the London Lions alongside your coach, Lloyd Gardner, where... The Caledonia Gladiators, although short-handed at this moment in time, no Ale Hodzic, no Pat Whelan, no Carl Jimenez, they did an incredibly good job of staying with the London Lions through that game until they clicked into the next gear and their, their, their depth came in for sure. Yeah, 100%. I thought, you know, they got amazing. Obviously, they're missing a couple of players in Pat Whelan and, and Faro Ale Hodzic. Um, but I think the... the the main players that stepped up, you know, Kwale Green, Fraser Malcolm had a great game, you know, and I think they'll be looking for similar similar production from those type of players again today. Well, let's find out how they fare. Mike Bothwell slipping into the two spot. Now that Kwale Green is leading at the one on last, driving to the bucket off the glass. And forgot to mention Ian DeBose as well. Out through injury. Yeah, they've almost had the opposite, you know, the tables have turned in that sense between these two teams because. Newcastle had a rough start as we see Darius again attacking aggressively. Um, but yeah, Newcastle had a rough start when it came to injuries, but they seem to have got everyone healthy and Caledonia seems to be having that, that problem now with injuries. Uh, here they come with Green. Screen from Clifton Moore Jr. Green gets underneath the basket and one. Something special is Quade Green. He might not be at times the most efficient player, but he never gives up and attacks the rack. Trying to put as many points on the board as possible. As you said, Dan, something a little different for this team. I feel like when they run out of options on the offensive end in terms of executing their 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 sets or their plays, then Green could come up with that little extra bit of talent to, to pull something out of the bag. Yeah, he's definitely got a bit of magic. Definitely got a bit of magic. You know, he can make something out of nothing, as we saw there. You know, you wouldn't have thought someone, uh, you know, of quality green stature against Todd Green. Underneath the basket, we'll be able to finish like that. But you know that talent, that that ability to use a spin off the backboard, you know, it's just it's just a special thing they've they've been able to acquire up in up in Glasgow. Well, yeah, he attended the University of Kentucky, University of Washington, also, and has played a little bit of professional basketball in his journey 
so far on his resume. He's played in Venezuela, he's played in the Dominican Republic, played in Mexico. And for some reason, I don't know if somebody showed him a sunny photo of England, he's decided to come here. <laughs> he's killed Bride on a, on a nice day, it's a nice place, but yeah. this happens two or three times a year. I, I must correct myself there because Scotland is not England, so he came to the UK. Yeah. Um, and we will say, and I'm sure our friends north of the border will agree, it gets a little even colder in Scotland than it does in England. I've heard nothing but great things about the way the Caledonia Gladiators look after their players. Of though, course, so I'm sure that's yeah. a, a huge factor in enjoying well, them. Well, I'm sure he's wrapped up warm in heated blankets and, and, and the lot. Oh, I hope so. Yeah. I'm, so <laughs> I'm sure they've got him a kilt and, and all that stuff, you know. But, um, but yeah, it's a great signing for the Caledonia Gladiators. Here's Johnson, step back triple for him. Back of the iron, rebounded by Clifton Moore Jr. Yeah, Clifton Moore's another guy who's been playing stepped up of late, you know. Farrow has been struggling with injury. He's been, he was really good against London. You know, obviously London's front line is, is extremely dominant in most games, but he really st you know, stood his ground. And, and one play there for Princeton Onwas. Taj Green right in his hip. Onwas to the rack for two. Yeah, it's not a great start for Taj Green. It's two fouls, two and ones. You know, if that's that's one area that Taj Green has to you know has to get better at. We know he's super talented on the offensive end, but he just has to get that levels of concentration and level of engagement in the game, you know, on both ends of the floor. Well, a positive start to this game for the Gladiators. 10 to 5 the score. One of the shorter journeys that the Eagles have to make on the road this season is up to Glasgow. See Will Neighbour come into the game there for Tajri. It's good to see him back out there after his knee injury. Will Neighbour has been in the British Basketball League for a number of years recently. Currently averaging just under four points per game, but this will only be his 18th game this season in the British Basketball League Championship. From older shots in England. Is this older shot north of England? No, it's down there, sorry. Down, sorry, man. Yeah, I was going to say. I never been to older shot. And the foul oh. is called. And two shots come. I've really shown how poor my geography is there. <laughs> really poor, but nonetheless, Will, ne Will Neighbour back in the mix and Larry Austin Jr. there fouled, going to the line. You know, those are just those energy plays that Larry Austin Jr. can give you, gives any team. You know, guard and playing from the guard position, able to get on the offensive glass and and create something out of nothing. You know, we talked about Quade Green doing it just through pure talent and pure magic. Uh, Larry Austin does it by pure energy. He is a you know doesn't stop he keeps going throughout the whole 40 minutes and he's that energy guy for the Newcastle Eagles high motor high motivation As he makes the first of those two free throws Mario Austin Jr two for two from the line do you think coaching GB would have given also a little bit of boost for Mark Stutel as well. Yeah, I think it was a, a really positive time for, for Coach Stutel and the GB you know, Federation in general. You know, it was a positive window, a lot of young players involved, and you know, some good some good results really. Um, see some good defense there from from Ricky McGill. Mm. Uh, I'm sure, I'm sure Coach Stutel will be proud, pleased to see that. Um, but yeah, I think stuff like that, you know, it does it does give the opportunity to give a a couple of breaks, a couple of you know, a bit of a fresh view on things. To see the yeah, bench again. A little warning there. Debose, Whelan, and Ali Hodzic, whilst not being able to physically play in the game, they're quite mentally locked in at this moment. As Johnson, oh, big rejection from Clifton Moore Jr. Yeah, great defense there from Clifton Moore Jr. Obviously, the advantage there in, in terms of height and length against Julian Johnson, but great play nonetheless. That line for the Eagles here. Neighbor back to basket over on West, rebounded by Moore. Green. Oh, great noise in there with the drums and the Wuvuzelas in Caledonia. Underneath the bucket. Foul called here by Onwas, and he's not quite sure why it's been called. 
So yeah. no way to the official. He boxed me out. Be good to see that one again if possible, but because I thought, you know, as, as he's saying, I think Prince Thomas was pretty straight and got got a lot of ball there. I think from that angle it's tough to see, but it did look like his arms were a little forward over Austin Jr. Now Onwas is going to head to the bench. And from what we understand, that's his second personal foul also in this one. And this was the problem against the Lions for the Gladiators. Foul trouble. Clifton Moore Jr. fouled out the game eventually. But any of that starting five fall into foul trouble, it can be a real challenge in the rotation. Fraser Malcolm came up big for them at times. He was shot the ball well from behind the arc. Yeah, but they do have a rotation of, you know, seven, eight guys at this moment in time due to all the injuries they have. You know, Carl Jimenez is also out. Um, so, yeah, it's tough for Coach Murray. You know, but he, you know, he's got some good players and some good talent. And if they can keep themselves on the floor, then they should be, they should be in this game until, until the end. Head coach Gareth Murray. As Green goes between the legs, kick to the corner. Bothwell sitting, waiting. He wasn't ready to catch and shoot that though, was he, Dan? As Jones, uh, Johnson gets it out to Whitfield. No, it's, it's very, I mean, the the beauty and the, the negative of having a player like Kwade Green, who is very ball dominant, you know, it does create sometimes a lot of stagnant offense, and the players who haven't got the ball in their hands don't Switch tend to be off, as yeah. ready as, as they should be. But um, Another block there from Clifton Moore. Clifton Moore's had a great start to this game on the defensive end. Paliza fouled. Two shots to come now for Paliza. As expected, a closely matched game between these two titans of the British Basketball League. Here's that block, Clifton Moore Jr. Just keeping Darius Defoe in check. But we're going to head to a quick break here. 4.38 on the clock, 11 to 8 the score. Caledonia by three. to the action here at the Play Sport Arena in East Kilbride in Glasgow. Lucas Paliza finds himself on the free throw line as the Caledonia Gladiators lead by three in this game with 4.38 on the clock remaining in the first. Tahi Hadra alongside Dan Clark taking you through this one live on the British Basketball League YouTube channel on TikTok and on Twitch. Big welcome wherever you're watching all around the world as you can see the two injured players there of the four injured in total for the Caledonia Gladiators. And he's good, there's the other two, Defoe and Jimenez. Nice backdoor cut there, Jordan Johnson. Up against Green. 
No mismatch there in terms of height for once for these two players. No, definitely not mismatch. <laughs> No, but it's, I'm really interested to see how this this uh, transpires throughout the game. Obviously, Jordan Johnson playing against his ex-team as well. You know, he's, I'm sure he's, willing, he's really looking to have a good game today. And Kuala Green is looking to lead this, this Caledonia team to, an, to another win at home. Johnson floats it up high enough over Paliza for two. He's just got... You know what I put it down to, really, is Rith's strength when it comes to those types of finishes. Because, yes, you can get up high as possible, and if your arm's fully extended, it's the strength of your wrist that can just give you that slight percentage you need to get the ball over taller defenders, off the glass, a little bit of spin, etc. that you need to finish in those those moments. And Jordan Johnson has incredible control of that. Yeah, I think you're, I 100% agree with you as well, but also his core strength. He's a, he, yep. he, he may look small and he may look a bit more petite than the other players on the court, but he is a strong, a strong guy, you know. People bounce off Jordan Johnson when you see him playing, and, and that's due to his core strength, I think. You know, he is, you, know, you see him there, his, his shoulder muscles and his, and his biceps are popping out of the jersey. Although he is 5'10", 5'11", you know, he can hold his own out there. As Clifton Moore finds himself on the free throw line, Carl Johnson has checked into the game, as has Josh Ward, Hibbert and Del Pesh for the Newcastle Eagles. Make sure that their lineup is correct here. Clifton Moore Jr. makes that count. I'm guessing a free throws will be a point of emphasis for head coach Gareth Murray. They missed quite a few against the Lions. Could have potentially brought that game even closer. Be looking to miss too many today because you can imagine a little bit even a tighter affair between these two teams. Bothwell, long two, rebounded by Whitfield. McGill, the crossover, pull up triple. McGill, sticky Ricky. Yeah, he's another one of those scorers in this league that once he gets going, he's tough to stop. See some great defense there from Joshua Hibbert. But yeah, Ricky McGill, another one of those 10, 18 and a half points a game this season so far. Oh, throwing it up top there for you there. Clifton Moore soaring through the skies, connecting. Kaboom. Newcastle really trying to exploit this mismatch here that they think they have with Will Neighbour against uh, Fraser Malcolm. Haven't been successful so far. Well, Lions did exactly the same. And I'm sorry to keep referring back to that game. It's the last example of understanding that situation as Johnson gets the bucket there. Well, it's the same situation. They had Gabe Olasherny, Josh Sharma, trying to pick on that mismatch against Fraser Malcolm. There's the alley-oop play. Bothwell connecting with Moore. Eyes looking up, Moore following through. And essentially what happened is Lions, all of their inside players weren't able to score the ball. Fraser Malcolm was just difficult for them to go up against yeah sometimes when you do when you do uh, you are so focused on that one thing on that one objective of, of making the most of one mismatch everything else stops and everyone else stops playing we talked a bit about it when regarding Quade Green uh, in the first time out as well where he's so ball dominant a lot of the other players will just stand around and watch him play and when the ball does actually come to them they're not ready to to shoot or execute a play that they they can do in their sleep normally and the same happens down in the other end with Newcastle. They're trying to exploit this mismatch time after time after time, and everyone else is just standing there watching. You know, it becomes very stagnant and very hard to get any rhythm, you know, during the game. Well, here is a stat for you. I was uh, taking a look through the history books, the history records, should we say, and the matchups between these two teams over the years. Well, since 2008 in league games, the head-to-head -head between the Newcastle Eagles and the Caledonia franchises, of course, previously named the Glasgow Rocks, the Edinburgh Rocks, um, and now the Caledonia Gladiators, is 41-4 to in league championship action in favour of the Newcastle Eagles. So there's only been four occasions in which the Caledonia or Scottish franchise at the time has defeated the Newcastle Eagles in league play, which is astounding. It is amazing, but I think that's... You know, it comes down to as well, if you look back through the history books as well, you know, Newcastle's history is amazing. You know, the, the team with the most the most trophies in, in the history of British basketball and you know, those 27 trophies, you know, they were during a certain period of time, they were pretty much unbeatable. You know, so there's no surprise there with that stat, I don't think. 
Yeah, Darius Defoe has got a lot of those trophies in his name as well. <laughs> Been there throughout you know, the whole time. As screen comes here from Del Pesh. McGill looks, finds Whitfield, who gets set into his shot, changes the angle. Scott Spencer comes up with the offensive rebound. Deflected away, Bothwell. Got two defenders on him, skips through them. Mike Bothwell to the left hand. Del Pesh, long pass ahead, 3v2 situation. Spencer in the corner for three. He gets his own rebound again. Newcastle reset their offense. Screen comes from Del Pesh, he rolls. Del Pesh to the rack for two. He hasn't had the best of seasons so far, but I'm sure Mark Stewart is you know, dying for him to have a good end to the season. You know, he can be so productive in this league and has been in past years. Just hasn't had the best of luck this, this season so far. I mean, off the pick and roll situation can be a, a real problem to deal with. As Clifton Moore Jr. goes to the left hand there, gets the friendly roll. Had that big highlight uh, also against Manchester as well. Big jam, and as you can see there, great job coming off the roll and finishing strong. Josh Ward-Hibbert lining up a triple of his own. It's way off to the right for Ward-Hibbert. Yeah, a bit uncharacteristic of Josh there. You know, Josh is normally always, pretty much always, makes the right decision on the call. And, you know, there wasn't much ball movement on that offense and, and took it upon himself to take a very difficult shot. Jordan Johnson has checked back into the game for the Eagles, as has Princeton Onwas. Remember, he's got two personal fouls in this one. Another foul now would prove particularly detrimental. In fact, it's still the first quarter. <laughs> Clifton Moore Jr. shooting the three. And able to get it to go. Someone of his size for him to be successful in Europe and playing a high level. He's going to have to learn how to be consistent from the three, really. Yeah, I do think he's, you know, I think he's been so impressive this year, though, as, as a first year rookie coming out, the amount of, you know, how versatile he is. As we see a great play, great veteran play there from, from Carl Johnson going to the basket. But yeah, I think Clifton Moore has been very impressive this year for me. He is capable of stepping out and shooting that three ball. He is capable of hitting the mid-range shot. Does he need to be more consistent? Yeah, 100%. But I think it's a great start to his pro career. And a foul is called here for Carl Johnson to enter the free throw line. There's Larry Austin Jr. Johnson rattles in the first. Oh, you've played with Carl Johnson. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about him. Wonderful person. A wonderful person. Um, one of the best teammates you can hope for and, and have on any team. Completely team oriented, wants the best for all of his teammates and then knows how to work hard and knows how to win a basketball game as well. Um, obviously coming towards the end of his career here, but I'm sure the, the amount of experience and, and veteran leadership he's shown up in Glasgow, I'm sure is, is a big part of them being successful this year. Well, and despite his age, being able to bring his veteran knowledge to the GB team as well, right? It's Clifton Moore Jr. pins that one to the glass. Well, here is Johnson. Calling the offense, using his expertise, seeing the clock. Come and get the ball, Quade. Let's settle things down. He's, he's literally telling them what offense to run, Johnson, as Quade Green splits the screen. And a foul is called. Someone reaching in there. Newcastle team foul trouble, two shots to come now for Green. But just tell me a little bit more about the, the the element of finishing your career like he is now and coming into the GB program nonetheless and still, of course, being able to hold his own. Yeah, I mean, a part of Carl's inclusion in the GB program was for that veteran leadership, obviously, as we, as we mentioned before, and in, in, in past commentary um, games. Uh, young team, I mean, you need that bit of that veteran leadership to teach them the ropes and show them the ropes at that level. Um, it's a different game, international basketball, and, and Carl's 93 caps now in, you know, so he's got a ton of experience, you know, a number of Euro baskets, Olympic games under his belt. You know, he is one of the, the people that, you know, we have to take our hat off and say <laughs> congratulations because that was a hell of a career you've had there. Um, and I'm sure he's got a couple more years left in him. He wants to play for as long as possible. Um, so we'll see what happens with, with Carl's career, but I mean, he can be immensely proud of what he's done so far. He's a couple years younger than you. Me and Carl are the same age. Well, then that tells me everything I need to know. We should be getting Dan Clark suited up. He's out here hooping. Come on, Dan. It's just Carl's knees are a few years younger than mine. Okay, right. I'll leave. I'll leave. Here we go. Jordan Johnson 
to beat the buzzer. Johnson off the glass and it's good to go for three. Jordan Johnson, the All-Star, making All-Star plays. Right at the buzzer in this one, keeping Newcastle within touching distance. Caledonia are in the lead. Second quarter coming up right after the break. Jordan Johnson signing off the first quarter with a buzzer beater. The one-legged runner behind the arc. Cash money. Cash money, and that's what he's capable of. That's what he does. You know, he's capable of these spectacular plays. Just needs to be key to bring that Newcastle back under 10 points again going to start this second quarter. 27 to 18, the score here. The Gladiators lead. And Onwas, his shot blocked away by Del Pesh. Couple of big blocks in this game so far. Larry Austin Jr. in and out dribble, kick out to Spencer for three. He's had a couple of good looks. Obviously, Mark Stewart's throwing him in early, giving him a, an opportunity. He needs to make one of those shots just to give to give coach a bit more confidence in him and, and, and let him be out there for a bit longer. Johnson, opposite side. Carl Johnson firing up a triple, getting the crowd and the bench on their feet. He's had a great start to this game. I think he's on. Seven on nine points now. Seven points personal for Carl Johnson. Great start. That's, that's the difference. That's the experience against the, the rookie of, of, of Spencer, who's you know, had a couple of good looks. Carl, once Carl gets an opportunity, he's not gonna he's not gonna let that guy get back in the game right there. Not gonna shy away from it. No doubt. No, Carl's never shied away from a shot. <laughs> that, that sounds like there's been many moments where he should have passed you the ball and he hasn't. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Down low inside, Del Pesh, left hand. Hook shot for two, Del Pesh looking good early on. Yeah, he started the game really well, aggressive, efficient inside. And he's had a couple of uh, big blocks to start the second quarter, so hopefully he can have a, a good game here for the Newcastle Eagles. Ten points is still the difference. Here's Green. Malcolm. Johnson again rattles in and out into the hands of Ward Hibbert. Foul called. Fraser Malcolm hand in the air, acknowledges his foul. Sideline for the Eagles. Ricky McGill checks back in. Well, Ricky McGill will be looking to dazzle for the All Star game. Man from Spring Valley, New York. 
Still relatively quite young is Ricky McGill. Yeah, I remember he had that big, big year in his first year in the UK with, with Plymouth. Harry Austin Jr. goes to the reverse there to finish the play up for the Newcastle Eagles. I mean, those are the type of players that just keep you in the game, keep every, all of the players engaged. The guys on the bench, we saw them up there cheering because it's just an energy play. It just gets you going, you know, and, and that's what Larry Austin brings to the table. Quade Green now. The basket, good basket interference. So the foul was called. Quade Green was going to miss the shot, but because of the interference, the basket will count. He'll go to the free throw line. Let's take a look back at this, Dan. Yeah, I think we just see here Delpesh goes up for that block and ends up hitting the backboard instead of the ball. And that is that is basket interference. Well, two more points on the board for Quade Green. He's now got seven points personal. Back on the line for his fourth free throw of the game. New, uh, sorry, Caledonia are 11 from 11 from the free throw line in this one. Yeah, as you said, Coach, Coach Gareth has probably got him on the free throw line after that London Lions game. And Don't leave the gym until you make 50. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Johnson. Pulling up. Three balls, no good. Big rebound underneath the rim for Del Pesh. What else has he got? Foul called. Now he'll go to the free throw line, rising up to grab that down. Yeah, that's two offensive rebounds on the same possession for Del Pesh. You know, he's had a great start. The energy's there, the confidence is there, the, the engagement is there, and I think you know, that's going to inspire a lot of confidence in Coach Stutel. Trying to find room to maneuver underneath that rim. Oscar Baldwin heads to the bench. This has been Del Pesce's kryptonite in the past from the free throw line. Absolutely. He's not the best free throw shooter. So it could have been a good foul from, from Baldwin, not giving up the easy two and, and making him earn it from the free throw line. Del Pesh shooting around 60% this season. Makes the second. Still waiting for this game to hit just to really get going. I think both teams are just holding back a bit and hopefully, you know, you see him, Newcastle going to this 2-3 this zone, uh, trying to throw Caledonia off a bit, but they both both teams seem to be holding back and a bit tentative to, to actually just really go for it. Offensive foul called here. Larry Austin Jr. lets out a roar of approval. And Newcastle will get the ball back. Carl Johnson just extends the, the offhand there into, into Larry Austin's neck, chin. I think that's a good call from the referee. Eagles with a stop. Can they chip away? Even more so at this lead that the Gladiators have built. Oh, and a technical foul has been... Was no, that technical? I think it was an offensive foul, foul offensive given foul there. Offensive Ricky McGill, yeah. Similar... similar action to what um, Carl Johnson did to Larry Austin there. Ricky McGill just pushing off Bothwell. Well, Newcastle earned it back, but give it away. Brings a Malcolm. More. Green pulls up, and that's good to go for Quade. That is a tough shot on the baseline against the bigger defender in Del Pesh and, and Jordan Johnson. And then Newcastle again with a, a needless turnover on the other end. Pass dribbled along the floor. Out of bounds. Green has 10 points personal. Yeah, I would say he's been a lot more efficient today than what we've seen in past games. You know, in past games, he's taken a lot of shots to get to, to, get to the point total he's had. But, um, but today, yeah, he's been really efficient, very smart with, with his movement and his and the, choosing the, t the, the point of attack a lot more clearly. 100% from the field so far as he gets the ball out to Paliza for three to beat the shot clock. Paliza hits the deck. The crowd. Hollering. I thought we called the ball out of bounds yeah. before the foul, but we'll see what the referees yeah, come up with. Yeah, see what the here. referees come up with here, but I don't necessarily think it was a foul either. No, it's a bit of a. 
just a coming together and Lucas Pelisa almost tempting the referees into calling a foul. Yeah, yeah as you said, the ball had gone out of bounds before there was any type of altercation there between Johnson. As I see there the strength of Johnson though, <laughs> throwing the bigger Pelisa <laughs> to the ground. Although Pelisa may, may have made the most of it, but, yeah. but still. Justin Junior pulling up from the L, uh, sorry, from the free throw line. Taj Green back in contested for the rebounds. More. Yeah, Caledonia's defense so far as well, especially in that pick and roll. They're being a bit more aggressive on the pick and roll. Uh, with, you know, obviously, Newcastle's strength is, comes from the from their you know, potent guard you know, backcourt. I mean, they're really doing a great job of stopping them getting into the paint and creating for others. Green in transition, one-handed punch running the lane. Yeah, hopefully that sparks Taj Green to get going because we haven't seen anything of him yet so far today. He's so so important for this Newcastle Eagle team to be successful because he can be that that X factor for them. You know he can do a, a, a lot of different things on the court, but but so far has been very very quiet. Bothwell head down to the bucket, rolls over the front of the rim. Johnson. Green for three, Taj Green can shoot the three, Taj, he can. Now Bothwell, oh, nice work there, Mike Bothwell evading McGill and evading Green. Smooth move from Bothwell, we've seen a couple of nice finishes around the ring now from him today. Him and, him and Kuala Green are proving to be a quite a potent backcourt offense as well. 39 to 25. Del Pesh across Larry Austin Jr. I'd like to see Larry Austin Jr. cut there when, when Del Pesh receives it on the on the short roll. Three-point shooting is not his forte. Well, they've got an advantage here. Wide open man. Offensive foul. Will the basket count? The referees will check. Was the was the shot released before the whistle was blown? It'd be good to see it again. I think it was. Um, I see. I'm the opposite. I don't think it was released before the whistle. Unfortunately, we don't have the luxury of Here instant replays. So. It's questionable whether that's an offensive I foul. I think, or... well, the referee puts his hand up He's... after the shot's released, but I'm not sure if he blew the whistle. Mm. He was in the motion of shooting it before, as, the, as the foul was made. So the three will count for Jordan Johnson, and the offensive foul will stand. <laughs> Much needed three. And we're going to take a quick break right now, and both teams will talk it over as Gladiator still in the lead against the Eagles. Well, the Newcastle Eagles getting this triple just before the break. An offensive foul at the same time. 
Caledonians have it on the sideline. 4.44 remaining here in the second. 39 to 28 to score. That three was big because the game was starting to slip away a little for Newcastle. Yeah, I think Caledonia have been really solid in this first half, especially on the defensive end. They've really stopped Newcastle getting to their, you know, the key areas of, of attack and and really limiting their, you know, I think Ricky McGill's on three three points personal at this moment in time. He's averaging 18 a game, you know, so being able to stop their, their potent players and their, their productive players on the offensive end has been key so far for Glasgow. Well, for that. Oh, nice handles there from Green. Bothwell. Nice pass inside. Three second violation called. Oh, a player down here. I think Darius has got a knee. Darius trying to Defoe. take that. Trying to take that offensive foul as he normally does. He'll be fine. He's a warrior. Yeah, I just guess it just hurts a little more when you get a little bit older, right? It just the pain stays there a little longer. Uh, and you played with Darius Defoe as well, haven't you? Played against Darius a few times now, yeah, he's, uh, let's see. Have you played alongside Darius, though, no. at any point? No, no, never. never played alongside Darius, but obviously a legend of the game in, in, in the British Basketball League. Uh, more trophies than any other individual, more games than any other, any other individual, so wealth of experience there as well for the Newcastle Eagles. Interesting. There we see that you know, Coach Stewart has gone back to his starting lineup, starting five. He's starting five. Interestingly, they're averaging 66 points per game. You know, that, that's a lot. You know, and it's important that they start to get some more production out of certain members of that that lineup. All right, and the other side of the floor, though, Clifton Moore Jr. laying it in for two. Well, at the moment. Taj Green punching one with two hands at the rim. At the moment, they're combined for 25 points, if my maths is correct, after that Taj Green dunk. Going into the half-time break. Almost close to halfway of their average as Fraser Malcolm. A turnover here. Darius comes up with the rebound again. Here comes... McGill handed it off Johnson, give and go, but for three this time, and Ricky McGill sticks it. Yeah, big time play there. Obviously, made the mistake initially giving the ball back to Quade Green, which we all thought was the, the worst decision in the world, but got lucky, came up, and were able to make a big three down the other end. That was Quade Green's first missed shot of the game. He gets it back here, bounce pass to Clifton Moore, and travel violation called here, and Newcastle get it back. This is positive for the Eagles. Yeah, very positive. I think if Newcastle Eagles can get this, you know, get this deficit down to five, six points by by a half time, then I think Coach Stewart will be very happy because they haven't played their best basketball. But you've got to hope they're going to play in the second half. Timeout called then. These two teams with a chance to talk it over. A play there for McGill for some of our younger viewers. He gave the ball inside to Jordan Johnson, then didn't assume that the play was over. He re-spotted to a position that he knew it would be available to be ready to catch and shoot that triple. Playing the game off the ball as is as important as playing on the ball, right? Yeah, 100%, 100%. The ball can only be with one player at any certain time in the game, so you've got to be able to move about the ball and, and relocate and find open spaces, you know, not just for yourself, but to create space for your teammates as well. It's extremely important. And playing with someone like Jordan Johnson, you know, if you do move off the ball, he will find you, as he did there with Ricky McGill. Well, don't forget, you can catch further analysis on the Inside the Paint show, live on the British Basketball League YouTube channel. Make sure you check that out. And also, if you want to catch up all the highlights, you can see them live on Sky Sports for Unbeatable. Unbeatable highlight show. Time call back in here. Eagles make their way onto the floor. 252 here, Dan. What are they trying to get done in this time? Yeah, I think it, Newcastle's objective has got to be to get this lead under, you know, this deficit under five points going into the half. 
Um, and obviously Caledonia's object is well, to, I mean, to extend it as much as they can. It's possible to get back into the lead for them yeah, as well. Yeah, 100%, but obviously being, you know, being safe and being a bit more realistic, because obviously Caledonia have played some great basketball so far this half. If Newcastle can go in five points down or, or less, as you say, you know, I think they'll, they'll be quite happy with that. Well, McGill off the glass, 45. Beautiful. Talent. Talent. He is a talent. He can score in many different situations. If Caledonia do let him get going, you know, I think he had a big game here previously when, when Newcastle won the, the first encounter between these two sides at, at play sport this year. Um, but yeah, he's had some huge games this year so far in the British Basketball League. Oh, and there's a block underneath the rim. Newcastle earned the ball back. McGill. Ah, miscommunication there between him and Taj Green. As Gladiators have numbers, Paliza, foul is called, two shots to come, getting the bump from Whitfield. Yeah, I really like Lucas Paliza. He's a solid player, solid player. He reminds me very much of his coach when Gareth Murray used to play, but, you know, play for the, for the Caledonia Gladiators, just solid. Always ready to shoot it when he's open, and Paliza's very similar. And that's probably one of the reasons what Gareth was looking for in a player was someone that he could really... I you know, really relate to really coach and, and make that play I better. I see you in me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, I see me in you. It's the other way around, right? <laughs> oh, dear. Another player you've, you've played alongside, Gareth Murray, the part of GB Set for many years as well. Yeah, Gareth. I mean, another another person who's committed a, number, a huge amount to the game in this country. You know, uh, experienced veteran with the GB senior men's team, and obviously moved into the coaching ranks now, where he's doing a great job up in Caledonia. Uh, alongside with the whole organization up there. I think it's, it's come on leaps and bounds and, and obviously the investment that they've had from, from the Timonese has, has gone gone really well so far and I think obviously they, they're a new arena, they're trying to they're trying to grow, they're trying to make basketball in Scotland and in the UK better for everybody. We need more people like that in our game, goes without saying. Here's Johnson. Defoe to the right hand for two. That was, that was quick for, for Darius, very agile. And almost a turn over there. Green picks it up. More. And Newcastle just need a couple of stops now to end this half. And I think they'll be going into the half the happier team. Belize jacks up the three. They've got a second chance opportunity here. Newcastle. Green. Showing off the handle. Nice hands from Darius Defoe. Deflecting the pass. And that's a huge part of any defense. You know, having active hands, as we saw there from Darius, he was, as you see, a big three here. Ricky McGill mm. had the space, had the time, and has committed the foul. Team foul trouble. And Clifton Moore, I believe, will shoot two. There's Green and deflected pass by Defoe. Yeah, he it. read that well because yeah. he knew that he was trying to get it over him to find a big fella. Yeah, exactly. And Darius is obviously not the, the tallest centre we'll find in this league, but he's very smart in the way he uses his hands and, and deflections and, and little things like that, as we see at the timeout here at the end of the half. Well, that foul on Ricky McGill is his third personal foul. Yeah, it was a silly foul, so, I think. Very silly foul. A bit of frustration there from missing... Missing a... You know, a, missing a... You know, for someone of his calibre, an easy shot in the corner there could have brought, you know... The Eagles right back in this game, you know, down three with 58 seconds to go in the half, and then just you know, has, makes that foul on Clifton Moore just out of frustration more than anything else, I think. Well, he had an incredible college career, did Ricky McGill, you know, Iona in, in the MAC conference, won a, a bunch of awards, won trophy after trophy after trophy. Why do you think, you know, maybe he's not gone to a higher level of professional basketball? yet at this point in time despite his his growth and his his talent and his ability well i think the talent is undisputable you can't you can't question ricky mcgill's talent on the, especially on the offensive end i think what ricky's been missing in previous years is maybe a bit of consistency because we see these huge outbursts of scoring outbursts but it doesn't happen on a week on you know week to week basis it happens once and there's a couple of weeks where he's he's not playing badly but he's not having that same output you know and i think this year is proving the point that he can be consistent you know averaging 18 points a game in the, in the british basketball league which across Europe and across the world is getting more and more recognition. Um, I think it's only been great for his career. Well, of course, we want to keep players here in the British Basketball <laughs> League, that's for sure. We want players to see this as an ideal location to, to live their life and, and earn a, a living playing basketball uh, in the UK, behind great crowds, behind great franchises, and, you know, 
the, the opposition you play at, you're competing against a very high level too, and it's improving year on year. Yeah, 100%. I think that's the best thing about the British Basketball League at the moment is, is the growth and, and the development around everything, you know, on the court, off the court. And having players like Ricky McGill in this league is, is the, benefit for every, uh, you know, the benefit to everyone. So, um, so, yeah, hopefully we can keep players like Ricky McGrill and hopefully he can create the fan base in Newcastle, can really start to relate to him and he can become some type of cult hero up in Newcastle. Uh, the feedback I'm getting is that he's loving life up in Newcastle. So, you know, hopefully we can see Ricky in this league for, for a number of years to come. Uh, reflective play out of bounds for the Eagles there almost picked away by the Gladiators 45 to 37 eight point ball game 58.1 on the clock Dan Clark said it'd be good if the Eagles could get within five points here and they've turned it over now full court pressure a little bit too much pressure for the Eagles it's a great call from Gareth Murray there I think in the timeout Looking for that pressure, looking to even if it's just to de delay the Newcastle Eagles offense, but it, you know, comes but also, up great. Off, when you're trying to break a press, why are all three guards so close to the inbounder? Yeah, I don't think Newcastle were expecting it for anything. They just expected to be able to bring the ball in and, and walk it up the court. But you know, great call from Gareth Murray there, and really caught Newcastle Eagles off guard. Yeah, two shots to come here now for the Gladiators. Chance to extend the lead to ten. And substitutions being made for the final 53.2 seconds. I think we can look for Caledonia to press again here as we see the the rebounding lineup has, has got some guards in it and you know, it suggests that they're going to continue with the full court press they've got some success from so far. Almost makes the second, let's see if that happens, it does indeed. Quade Green put in on the pressure to Jordan Johnson and finally their players create some space for Johnson to be able to get the ball over halfway. Post action here between the two smaller, smaller guards. Johnson firing it up. And at this time, pushed ahead to Green. Green handed it off to Onwas and one. Princeton Onwas. Strong to the bucket, dropping the shoulder, finishing at the rim. Green had options, chose Onwas on his right. And Josh Ward here, but tried to take the stand. Too late. I mean, Josh was in th on a three-on-one situation there. It's going to be very hard for him to stop it, especially with a great, great point guard like Quade Green, who made the right pass at the right time. And anonymous day, we saw the use of the body. You know, we've seen the use of the body a couple of times in this first half, where it's been called as an offensive foul. You know, Carl Johnson on on Ricky McGill, but they're using that el using that shoulder to to great effect. Now, a potential final shot of this one. About one second difference between the game clock and the shot clock here's Jordan Johnson hands it off to Josh Ward Hibbert inside blocked away Clifton Moore protecting the paint as he's been called by his Caledonia faithful following the block nest monster that is a very good nickname that is a brilliant <laughs> nickname exceptional yeah, we'll see what Coach Stort will draw us up here. He's got obviously the 2.7 second, seconds left in the in the second quarter, but only one second left on the shot clock. Be interesting to see what he's able to draw up. Well, that is Clifton Moore Jr.'s fourth block of the game, and he has 10 points, 11 rebounds, double double, double double. And he's you know, those four blocks is impressive. I said at the beginning of the game he's had a great start on the defensive end, but he's continued that on the offensive end as well. Um, obviously cleaning up on the glass and, and finishing when he's been given the opportunity. What are you drawing up here then, Dan? What can you imagine your friend Mark to be drawing up? Well, one second is tough, isn't it? It's got to be a catch-and-shoot situation or a tipping situation. You know, he may look for a, for a smaller matchup or, you know, in the post and just lob the ball into the middle of the keyway, which is quite typical. You see it a lot in, in basketball. Or he may be looking for a, <coughs> the likes of Whitfield or, or McGill coming off the screen for a catch-and-shoot. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what he goes with. Let's find out. This play is ready to resume here. There's Clifton Moore's double-double statistics. 
not on that stats is the four blocks he has. Seems some big stat lines today, hey, to you. Yeah, we have some great <laughs> stat lines. Some great score lines as well. <laughs> well, it depends who you support. Well, but, it yeah. does depend who you support from the neutral fan. And that Bristol performance was special. Here we go, let's see what they do, draw up. Caledonia switching everything, but it gets into the foe, whose shot is short. And at the end of the half, 49 to 37, a 12 point advantage for the Caledonia Gladiators against the Newcastle Eagles. More analysis coming back after the break. British Basketball League Championship action. It's game two of this Sunday. And at this moment in time, halfway through the game, it is a lead for the Caledonia Gladiators, 49 to 37 against the Newcastle Eagles. My name is Sai Hajat alongside Dan Clark. A little bit of a stop start first half for this team. There's not much flow for either. No, not much flow. I think Caledonia will be delighted with the, the score at the moment. Obviously, 12 points up. I don't think they played great basketball. They've been very solid, especially on the defensive end. Um, I think Newcastle will be disappointed, especially with those last two minutes. We talked about it during that time that it would be great if they could get into the game with just, you know, into the half with that five point deficit and it's gone the other way for them, you know. Well, let, let's look at the numbers then and find out a little bit more about how this has all been going. What stands out for you there, Dan? Well, we look at the free throws for Caledonia. That's a lot of free throws in one half. But then I think for Newcastle Eagles, those, those shooting percentages, it's just not good enough uh, and not going to allow you to win a game at this level. Um, so that will be look, something they'll be looking to improve for the for the second half and obviously I think Caledonia as I said on the defensive end they've been great and that contributes to Newcastle's bad percentages but you know Caledonia two point field goal percentages is very high 61% that's great that's Clifton Moore that's you know Carl Johnson getting to the rack that's Quade Green finishing in the paint you know that's really that's really good news for them I think and hopefully that will open up things up for for the likes of Palazia, Fraser Malcolm and people like that to you know to get some open looks from the three point line in the second half. Well let's take a look at the story of the half for you and see how this game broke down. I mean, Caledonia Gladiators did start the better team. They looked like they were fluid, moving the ball, finding good looks at the rack, and 
Newcastle Eagles struggled to deal with them early on. Yeah, I think Newcastle weren't engaged enough defensively early on. You see, you know, we saw Taj Green pick up those two early fouls with and ones. Um, but yeah, it was um, it was an interesting half because, as you said, it wasn't very fluid for either team. But I think that suits Caledonia. You know, obviously the, the, the amount of usage that Quade Green has with the pick and roll and the ball in his hands, it is very stop start. And then in terms of their offense, I think Clifton Moore has been the, the player of the half for me. He's been outstanding on both ends. You know, obviously we see that he's got up to a double double already with 10 points and 11 rebounds. But you know, those four blocks have been huge so far this in, in this game. There's only five points that have come off the Newcastle Eagles bench. Del Pesce with all five of those. Better production required? Yeah, I mean, that was one of the things I think we were most excited about, wasn't it? Is that we were finally going to see a, a fully a full-strength Newcastle Eagles team, and that full strength hasn't really helped them at all today. You know, they've been given opportunities by Coach Dootle, and they haven't really produced, and I think that'll be something that needs to improve in the second half. Without a doubt, well, the Newcastle Eagles are trying nonetheless. There's Taj Green also in foul trouble for the Newcastle Eagles, punching one and trying to block one on the other end. Mike Bothwell going to work. And Ricky McGill doing his best, come what may. He's got eight points personal alongside four assists in this one. But the Caledonia Gladiators, they're in the lead, they're in control. Well, coming up next for you, there's been lots of action this weekend, but what we're going to take a look at first is the Newcastle Eagles performance against the Manchester Giants. Then following that, we'll check out the game that we did earlier on today, Bristol Flyers taking on the Leicester Riders. And Johnson's going to fire up the threes halfway down. McCordy knew that was him as soon as he left his hand. Lewis tipped in by William Lee. Johnson piles on the pain. You feel like Newcastle have just stepped it up here in the second quarter. These are dangerous moments for the Manchester Giants. Delpesh catches the law. Great pass from Johnson and finish with emphatic style. Oh, nice pass. Somebody's got to make a shot at the end of this, and they get the three. Beautiful play from the Eagles. Stolen away by Austin, kept it in play. McGill lobs it up to Green, and there's some all-star action for you. Lewis to the fall away, that's good. He looks comfortable, doesn't he? Yeah, he, he does Lewis. look comfortable. They've done well there to keep the ball alive, Newcastle. Not the cleanest play, but will they get points at the end? Of course they will, as Whitfield makes it five of five from the floor. Lewis bullying his way to the basket and throwing it in off the glass. So he's the one point of resistance right now for the Manchester Giants. Lewis from deep strings it, Nicholas Lewis. Still asking that question. And Manchester's transition defense is not great, although Anderson gets there. And there's he is again, a 7-3. There's Green. He knocks down the corner shot for three. Spencer going to fire up the three. He's going to knock it down now as well. And the Newcastle Eagles, a dominant display here. Highlighted by some stunning shooting from Devin Whitfield, and A perfect game from him, 23 points in just 24 minutes. Bradley. Nice little short shot there, 45 degrees, no backboard required. Stolen. Johnson now looking at the triple, and that's a big five-point play for the Bristol Flyers. Bristol will look to find the best possible opportunity to score the ball here, which is Jacob, catch and shoot, three, and it's just going to be one of those days. You can feel it. You know, Leicester Riders are playing catch-up basketball at the moment. Jaron Holmes, big three if it goes down, and it does. Damage control there from Jaron Holmes. Bradley inside again, going to work alongside Ollison. You know, it's not been Leicester's day so far. Johnson lining up another triple. Keeney Johnson, knocked down. 
Bradley. Green with the boards and one. That's an incredible rebound and finish from Green. It's been a great, great half of basketball for the Bristol Flyers, both offensively and defensively. Well, there is a foul and a bucket. Jaron Holmes going to the reverse. Defender on his back. Flyers with a chance here to go 30 points into the lead as Lucas does exactly that, pouring in a triple. What a save of the pass that is, and Ollison just throws it up there. Lucas slipping and sliding on the floor, gets the pass up eventually. Turbin Ollison knocking it down from the deep. Thomas Edwards turning the corner, going up. Oh, that's a big rejection from Drew Shelton. Blake Bowman now, the showman, rising above the rim. That man has got bounce. Teddy Allen to the right hand. The basket is good for Teddy Allen. Johnson skipping through. Keeney Johnson to the left hand. Jacob, and they're just off running here, Bristol. Foul called, blocking foul, basket good. Trajan Jacob to the bucket. Bristol Flyers, biggest ever victory against the Leicester Riders. And the only time ever that they've put 100 points past them. Well, it's all-star game round the corner. Make sure you check this VT out and have a little look at this. The game of basketball requires a high level of concentration, advanced physical skills, and a deep knowledge of strategy. It also... It's also an unbeatable fast. That's what I'm talking about. Nothing beats an unbeatable basketball. Get it, boys. Nothing beats. High flying jumps. <laughs> Nothing beats three pointer from D. Wow. Woo. Nice. 
nothing beats selecting your favorite players from the north and south. Nothing beats the best basketball entertainment. Watching the UK's best ballers, the sickest skills in the UK. Mm -hmm. It's the All Star Game, baby. Unbeatable All Stars, March 17th, London Copper Box. Don't miss it next Sunday, the All Star Game at a Copper Box Arena in London. Buy your tickets now, scan the QR code. And if you can't join us in the arena, make sure you're watching live on Sky Sports. Now, final team talks in this one as the Caledonia Gladiators are in the lead, 49 to 37. My name's Tahir Haja alongside Dan Clark, taking you through this game, our second game of the day here. Live on the British Basketball League YouTube channel, live on TikTok and on Twitch. And what can the Newcastle Eagles do in this second half, Dan, to, to get back in the game? Well, the first thing they need to do is they need to get off to a good start. You know, they can't have a similar start that they had in the first half where they were, they were straight away, they were behind six, seven, eight points. You know, they need a good start. They need to get back into this game and they, they need some of their big players to start stepping up. You know, mainly Taj Green. I think he's an extremely important piece for, for the Newcastle Eagles and he hasn't really performed up to where, you know, to the level he should do so far today. 27 to 18 in the first quarter, 22 to 19 in the second. Caledonia, Caledonia winning both of those. Let's see now if the Newcastle Eagles can fight back. Beautiful pass here inside to Green, and there you go. You mentioned he needs to get going, and there's a jam. Hopefully that will be the spark that gets him going. You know, it was a great, great play coming out of the out of the halftime by by coach there, and you know, they went straight to Taj Green in the low post for the easy dunk. Well, here is Bothwell. Into the hands of Juan Wass. Gladiators taking their time. It's on Wes tries to beat the buzzer with the with the two. And Jordan Johnson saves that from going out of play. And that's one of those. Oh, oh McGill, balls. beautiful pass. Johnson threading the needle. Yeah, we see that moving without the ball as you talked about in the first half to here. Ricky McGill really running that outside lane as, as fast as he could, really. And Jordan Johnson noticed that and made a perfect pass, perfect bounce pass in the gap. Here is. Green moves the ball into the hands of Onwas. Moore waiting for Bothwell. Clock winding down again here. This is good signs for the Newcastle Eagles. They're running this shot clock down and they're reaping the rewards with another rebound. Yeah, great defense in the first two two offenses in the in the second half. You know, being a lot more aggressive, a lot more active with their hands, a lot more active with their bodies. You know, we saw Darius Defoe, they're showing really hard on that last pick and roll, and it's you know, it pays dividends, I think, you know, the attitude there. Johnson. The foul called here. Will the foul be called on? It's called on Onwas. The referees will check what the call is. It's a kickball violation has been changed. And now it will be a Caledonia possession. Yeah, it's a strange one. That one, I'm not really sure what happened there. Jordan Johnson obviously lost his foot in. And I think he just then just kicked the ball kicked as he ball. lost it. And then yeah. Onwas came in to the back of him. And that's where the foul was called. But kick ball first. And, and now the Caledonia officiating team will make sure that everything is good in the book and also good on the clock. Mark Stutel just trying to confirm what's happening. There's your officiating team, Simon Unsworth, Tom Muddyman, and Chris Dodds. Scrappy one, that one. We'll leave it as that. Say that again? Scrappy play. We'll just leave it as scrappy. Yeah, we'll leave it as I don't think anyone was very happy with the outcome, but. <laughs> Maybe Caledonia, they got the ball yeah. back. Fresh 24. Clifton Moore moves the ball into green. Foul call and one, Quade Green picking up where he left off, 14 points personal. Yeah, as I said, he's been extremely, extremely efficient. You know, Quade Green's had a great start to his life, to life in the British Basketball League, but he hasn't been the most effective and efficient player. But today he's playing extremely good basketball, you know, really picking his moments to attack and, and be effective. As you see there, another foul for Ricky McGill. Oh, this is his fourth foul. personal foul, which is not good at all. Yeah. Second highest scorer in this game. For the Eagles, he's got 10 points. Jordan Johnson has 11. But now we'll have to sit down for the majority of this third quarter, I'm guessing. 
or for the rest of it, depending on how Mark Stutel wants to play this. Yeah, I can't see Mark Stutel bringing him back in any time before the fourth quarter. Well, I think he, he uh, just was quoting the uh, foul count there to the officials. Bucket is good for the Eagles on that play. Green. They've really taken the sting out of this game here in Caledonia. They've slowed everything right down. And that is not what Newcastle want. Newcastle are an upbeat, up tempo team, you know, and they need to get out and transition and run. They need to play quick offenses as and you know the type of players they have, Larry Austin, Taj Green, you know, they are effective in those world in that world, but so far they haven't been able to do that. Yeah, underneath the basket. Larry Austin Jr. going up, Green trying to tip it in. Second chance was no good, and a holding foul called. And Caledonia possession on the sideline. Here is Moore. Green for three, Quade. Just too easy that you know, a player of Quade Green's quality and caliber, you can't just leave him open on the three point line to, for an easy catch and shoot three. You know, he's had to work pretty hard for most of his points and he's done exceptionally well so far today, but you know, that was just too easy. Jordan Johnson wants a foul on that play, but it'll get the bucket to go. You know, Jordan Johnson seems to be only he's obviously playing with that little bit of a chip on his shoulder due to the fact that he is his ex team and he wants to, he wants to, you always want to beat your ex team. He's one of the few people that in the Newcastle Eagles has got that energy at the moment and that desire to, to come back into this game. Beliza. Moore. His pass. Should, the chance of him receiving that pass picked away by Jordan Johnson, who's now going to go to the free throw line to shoot two. This will be probably the third visit, or should I say fourth visit to the free throw line for the Newcastle Eagles in this game. Jordan Johnson, one of those players who knows how to get to the free throw line. Oh, Uses his body well. They haven't given him two shots for that one, today. Oh, him? no, they have not. Change the call there. Maybe it was called on the floor. Defoe goes to set the screen up high. Bothwell gets over it. And in front of Johnson, looking down low. Larry Austin Jr. now. Defoe fade away. Clifton Moore Jr. grabs under the board. Beliza off the dribble to the bucket, blocked away. Taj Green will claim it. Josh Ward Hibbert applying the pressure. Now here he is on the offensive end of the floor. Green. Ward Hibbert calling for the screen. To the left hand, nice work from Josh Ward Hibbert and great decision to stick with the play. Yeah, you know, it looks a bit stagnant, a bit static. Wasn't really sure what they were doing, but you know, was quite clear with his with his commentary to, to Taj Green for the screen and then made a great finish with his left. That was really smooth. You can see Mark Stutel over there still chewing away at the, the, the ear of the referee. But, um, Clock it. winding down here, Green has to get it off. And Green will knock it down again. Another triple for Quade Green. 21 points personal. And wow, Taj Green, namesake, other side of the floor. Power jam. Yeah, we've seen him do that a couple of times after after a scored basket by Caledonia, just run the floor really hard and, and end up with a pretty emphatic dunk. Green again, he's going off now. He's feeling it. He's definitely feeling it. Other side, straight away, Newcastle pushing the pace. Foul call, two shots to come. Foul call there on Clifton Moore. Here's that green three. Cash. Just turning away from the defenders. And a short jumper there. And more from him and the Caledonia Gladiators taking on the Newcastle Eagles right after this break.
Gareth Murray and his gladiators in the lead. 23 points from Quade Green, who's only missed one shot all game. But right now, Jordan Johnson, he finds himself on the free throw line. He's got 15 points personal for the Newcastle Eagles, the leading scorer for them in this game. Yeah, we talked about that matchup at the top of the show, the, 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 the battle of the point guards. Uh, obviously, Quade Green coming up, coming out on top at the moment, both from his team point of view and a personal point of view. You see Jordan Johnson miss a free throw. But yeah, it's been a great matchup, and I think it's extremely exciting to see both of them play. But um, Quade Green coming out on top so far. I think you're right in the element of, you know, from a team perspective, they're working really hard to get Quade Green open. Uh, whereas Newcastle, those majority of attempts on the basket coming in transition. This is an interesting change up here that Newcastle Eagles have made. They put the bigger, the bigger and more physical Josh Wald Hibbert on Quade Green to see if that can disrupt him a bit more than than what has been happening so so far in this game. Well, here is Green. Oh, oh my goodness! Does he make it? Almost, but he's just playing with defenders now, wrapping it from behind between the legs then dancing with Josh Ward Hibbert would have been a big time bucket as Bothwell goes to block there and a foul is called and he doesn't feel like there was any contact two shots to come again for the Eagles Ken Jordan Johnson might be the best player in the league at, at using his body and initiating that contact from from the defensive players we see there kind of jumps it into Bothwell a bit uh, to draw that foul as he's, as he's going to the basket um, but yeah, he's probably the best in the league at doing that and drawing that foul and making sure that the refs are aware that he's been there's been some contact on the way to the basket. There wasn't much contact there though. No, but there was enough for the ref to call it, which is <laughs> which is what Jordan Johnson wants. Yeah. As he knocks down the first of those two, look along the baseline there, you'll see the Gladiators entertainment team doing their best to put Jordan Johnson off as well. As the fans, the Vuvuzelas, the drums. Oh, no pressure for Jordan Johnson. Two for two. Again, Newcastle are they are they're not playing great basketball. They're not playing you know the basketball they want to play, but they are hanging around in this game. You know, ten points is not a big deficit. Uh, this is what, what what happened with Lions as well the other day when Caledonia lost. They were leading for the most part all of the game, and then in the fourth quarter or well, the second half overall, it was really tough for them as Bothwell contested. Can't get the finish. Larry Austin Jr. charging forward. Johnson again gets it out. Whitfield looks across. Jordan Johnson in the corner for three. Fraser Malcolm comes up with the rebound. Yeah, disappointed of himself there. Jordan Johnson, you see him getting back on defense, clapping his hands in disappointment. But Paliza, catch and shoot. See, that's what you can't do. You can't be disappointed and, and let it affect you on the defensive end. Jordan Johnson disappointed about the three-point shot he made on one end. Wasn't really paying attention on, on defense and left one of the best shooters in the, in the British basketball league wide open for, a, for an easy catch and shoot three. Down low to foe. Fade away. Two. That's good. Trademark Darius Defoe. I think he's done that to more than one defender in, in his time in this league. Has he done that to you? No. <laughs> Paliza, another triple. Yes, please, from Paliza. Jordan Johnson showing off the handles now. Ball rotation, Larry Austin Jr. Slips. Johnson in the corner, hesitation. Back out, Whitfield. Trying to get his shot off. Johnson again has to shoot the mid-range this time, and it's good. I think Caledonia did a great job of sticking with that uh, rotation there of the ball and closing out, but eventually Jordan Johnson, the ball moved enough to give him plenty of time. Yeah, I was a bit disappointed with Whitfield on that last offense. You know, Whitfield is there. He is the designated shooter for the Newcastle Eagles, and he wasn't ready to shoot the ball when Jordan Johnson swung the ball to him there. Um, he's a, is a designated shooter, and he is knocking it down right now. Yeah, he's not thinking twice about, about what he's doing with it once he catches it. He is three for five from behind the arc. As he goes to attack the rack again this time. Johnson. Backdoor cut, but two players there to 
potentially receive it, is kept alive. Ward Hibbert, four seconds on the shot clock. Defoe's got to let it go. And that's the shot clock violation. Gladiators get it back. Yeah, great defense from the Caledonia Gladiators. Uh, lack of awareness from the Newcastle Eagles, but still great intensity, great intent, you know, great activity from the Caledonia Gladiators there. And, it, you know, they got the, they got the reward they deserved. Scott Spencer was trying to get back onto the court before the ball was passed in play. Maybe the next change for the Newcastle Eagles. Yeah, we haven't seen Malcolm Del Pesce in this uh, third quarter. I thought we had a good first half. He was quite active and efficient when he was on the floor. Oh, we're seeing him now come into the game. Just on cue, Dan, they've got mics on us. <laughs> and uh, Defoe and Jordan Johnson will take a break. Now Scott Spencer and Del Pesce check in. Larry Austin Jr. will control the offense now for the Eagles. Gladiators, here's Bothwell. Police are again for three. Back of the iron. Offensive rebound now. Bothwell. Wow. I mean, unorthodox there from Bothwell. Yeah, he kind of got himself in a bit of a tangle there, not knowing what to do and threw up a bit of an unorthodox shot. You know, we've seen it a lot in whether it be in the NBA or, in, or around Europe and in, in the British Basketball League. When players get in that situation, they will throw the, throw the ball off the backboard to themselves and catch it for a nice little lay-in or a spectacular dunk, but he was just at the wrong angle to do that, so I think he tried to you know, tried to make that one-footed floater slash shot that wasn't very effective. 12 <coughs> points is the difference. One minute on the clock here in the third. That's bounced off the leg of Baldwin, so Larry Austin Jr. can keep the play alive. That's intercepted. Here comes Carl Johnson. Josh Ward Hibbert in his way. Carl Johnson to the right hand over Josh Ward Hibbert for two. Yeah, it's interesting. Ever since Jordan Johnson's gone out of the game you know, at the end of this third quarter, they've kind of lost their way again, Newcastle Eagles. Whitfield trying to go to work on Paliza. Foul called eventually. Paliza drawn into lowering his hands and his stance. And two shots to come now for Devin Whitfield. Well, you don't see too much of this from Devin Whitfield. Taking no, you don't. Taking a guy on one-on-one -on -one and using his handles to try and get by them. But that's, uh, that's where I think Newcastle Eagles are at in this game. They're not really sure. You know, their option one, two, and three has been denied successfully by the Caledonia Gladi Gladiators, and they're now trying to have to do stuff that they're not used to doing. You know, hence, Whitfield trying to go off the dribble against a good defender in Palazzo, but... Hopefully these free throws can get Whitfield going and you know, a shooter like that, once he sees the ball go through the basket one time, you know, that, sometimes that's, that's enough. Well, he had an incredible game against the Manchester Giants. He went seven for seven from downtown. A total of 23 points in that game alongside seven rebounds, six assists. Monster game in his last outing at the Virtu Motors Arena. But for now, he's been limited to just those couple of points he's got there on the free throw line. Newcastle out and running again. Austin Jr. right hand and one. Larry Austin Jr. converting at the rim. Again, they're just hanging around this you know, eight, nine, ten, eleven point deficit. You know, they, they can't seem to break through that, but they're not letting the game get away from either. So, you know, if you're a Newcastle fan going into this half, you've got to be hopeful that they're, you know, into this last quarter, sorry. You've got to be hopeful that they're going to be able to go on a little run here and get right back into this game. Larry Austin Jr. Bothwell to beat the buzzer and at the end of the third quarter the score stands at 70 to 61 Newcastle nine points down but a big 10 minutes coming up straight after this break
Welcome back for the fourth and final quarter of another great weekend in the British Basketball League Championship. Jordan Johnson, 20-piece in this game. And they're going to be relying on his scoring and playmaking ability to help the Newcastle Eagles get by the Caledonia Gladiators as they trail by nine. Joining me in the studio today, Dan Clark. And he thinks that the Newcastle Eagles being in striking distance gives them an opportunity. Yeah, 100%. I think we, you know, we're all aware that they haven't played great basketball today, but they're still in this game. They're still in this game. They've still got a chance if they can go on a little run, you know, get a couple of stops. Oh, the like ball's it. bouncing around there underneath the rim. <coughs> Jordan Johnson's come up with it. He's going all the way to the bucket, skips it out. Josh Ward Hibbert inside. Del Pesh, strong left handed finish from Del Pesh. Yeah, he's been really good. Every opportunity he's been given today, he's produced, uh, you know, he's been efficient and he's been effective on the court. You know, I think that's that's a good sign for things to come for the Newcastle Eagles. It'll be interesting to see how long Gareth Murray holds out and take and bring Kwade Green back into this game. Well, Will Neighbors only seen, you know, we saw him at the beginning of the game. He's only seen three minutes 52 of the floor. Oh, I hope he's not injured. You know, I see him there at the end of the bench being... Mm. Vocal and trying to get behind his teammates here, but a foul is called. Yeah, Will Neighbor is a great teammate, Will. <laughs> great guy, great teammate. Everyone loves playing with him and see him at the end of the bench there. He's not worried about his minutes or his stats. You know, he wants the best for his team and he wants the best for the Newcastle Eagles organization. Well, from Aldershot in the south of England. In yeah, Surrey. <laughs> or in, in Surrey. Surrey. Yeah. You see Quade Green back in the game now for, for Caledonia. You know, Mark still seems to have liked that matchup with the bigger Josh Wald Hibbert on him to see if that can disrupt his rhythm a bit more. But, you know, he's been playing great basketball so far. Well, here he is, guarded by Josh Wald Hibbert, skips to the corner. Fraser Malcolm fires one up from the corner, and that's what he does, Fraser Malcolm, letting it fly. Yeah, he's got that, that corner marked with an X, and you know, every time he's there, he's confident he's going to make that shot. Ward Hibbert. A rebound for Pelisa. Green. Another beautiful pass to find Johnson this time. Offensive board for Green. He's got more room than he thought, so he'll catch a couple of points to put on his tally, making him at 25 personal. That's like a layup for Kuala Green. That, that wide open, that close to the basket. Just can't let that happen. Well, a timeout called now by the Newcastle Eagles because Caledonia have pushed that lead back out. 75 to 63 is the score, 12 points the difference. They're only trailing by, trailing by nine at the beginning of the quarter. Well, look, there's all-star caliber on the Newcastle Eagles team and the all-star game is coming up next week. Here are the rosters, if you didn't already know. Today, we see Clifton Moore from the Gladiators, Ricky McGill, Taj Green, Larry Austin Jr. and Jordan Johnson all in action, but some great candidates there. And obviously in the South team, we saw the Bristol and Leicester contingent of that same part. Dan, come on then. Who do you think is going to take this one if, well, you are a GM of a team. Who would you pick? Which team would you like to take under your wing? I mean, just looking at that list, I think that's a... A clear example of the talent we have in this league, you know, obviously some of the top players in the league you know, playing really well this year. All of the teams represented, which is a great thing as well. So all the fans can get down there and watch those games. I'm going to say I'm going to go with the South. You know, my guy yeah. Padilla Wang's on that team. I'm going to I'm always going to be rooting for my guys and hopefully they can come out of a win. And as we said before, hopefully it is a, a really competitive and, and fun game to watch for everyone. Well, yes, we do hope indeed the starters also there marked by the stars. BritishBasketball.com, Ricky McGill fuming, not happy because, of course, he's on four personal fouls and wants to get back in this game and make a difference. Scan the QR code now if you want to buy tickets for the All-Star game. Not many tickets left now. Josh Warren Hibbert. To the corner with Spencer for three. Del Pesh inside. Mm. Big jump, Malcolm Del Pesh finds the space, rises up. Sticks it on the defenders. Yeah, I mean, he's been a bright spark for the for the Newcastle Eagles off the bench. You know, we talked about New, uh, Newcastle's bench points at, at the half, you know, and he's he continued to improve on that in the second half. Well, that was a wonderful pass again from Green, but Moore unable to 
unable to make that happen. Jordan Johnson saying, I was shooting on that play. And the referees will discuss this call very quickly. And it's just a regular foul. But he's a new, exactly what he was doing, a tactical foul here. Yeah, I'm half and half on that one. But um, Jordan Johnson knew exactly what Palais was doing as well and tried to get that ball up. But you know, it is, you know, we talked about before, Jordan Johnson is an, an artist in, in, in that sense in trying to trick the referees into into what he wants, uh, using his body, using that contact and, and anticipating what the defence is going to do. McGill. Whitfield, wide open this time for three. And there it is, he just needs one chance. Yeah, a good couple of offences here and a good couple of defences from Newcastle coming out of that timeout. Well, they've got themselves back out of trouble. Paliza firing it up. Rebound. Who's going to get it? It's fighting for Moore, back out to Green, ball rotates, Paliza inside, Moore, that's great basketball from the Caledonia Gladiators. Yeah, it was great, great hustle originally from Carl Johnson and, and Clifton Moore on the offensive glass. Oh, watch out, straight down the other side, Jordan Johnson with a bullet pass, Del Pesh rising up for another jam. I think this is what we were expecting to hear, a bit more of this throughout the game, you know, a bit more explosiveness, a bit more energy. You know, we started to see both teams come to life here in this fourth quarter. Here is Green again, stepping through, throwing it up and gets the friendly bounce. Everything this guy's touching in this game is gold. Jordan Johnson now, foul is called. Polita was trying to stand strong, but he was on the side of Jordan Johnson there. Let's take a look at these two dunks. Nice ball movement there. Moore gave the ball up to get it back in a better position for a better finish. But straight away, Eagles in transition. Del Pesh flying. I think we saw the experience there of some of the Caledonia Gladiator players. Now with Clifton Moore being the rookie players, really obviously been learning off these players day in, day out of practice in terms of what the right thing to do is at the right time. You know, made a great decision to kick it out to more experienced players like Palazzo, and Palazzo's returned the favour by delivering it on the plate for him to throw it down. Well, Jordan Johnson back on the free throw line to add to his 20 points. That free throw tally has evened out a little here now. 15 trips to the free throw line for the Eagles, 19 trips to the free throw line for the Caledonia Gladiators. Yeah, a lot of that has been Jordan Johnson being a lot more aggressive in the second half. You know, he's been made a real effort to get downhill and get into that into that blue painted area. You know, and it's been effective for his team. You know, seven points down now with six minutes to go. You know, they're not in a bad position. Use this to their advantage. Here's Johnson. Onwas. Moore, one on one with Del Pesh. Didn't quite get his angles right that play. Johnson off the dribble, rejected. There's a Malcolm and Clifton Moore both rising up for that one. Not quite sure which player got it. Jordan Johnson thought we had a mismatch there with Fraser Malcolm, but turned out to be the opposite there. Great defense from, from Fraser Malcolm. Oh, here's Whitfield. Nice pass inside to Ricky McGill. Well wet. Offense in reaction to the switching style defense of the Gladiators on that inbound play. Newcastle have numbers. Josh Ward Hibbert to the right hand again. Josh Ward Hibbert for two. Yeah, that's how the game of basketball swings. Twos and throws, you know, Carl Johnson misses in the layup in transition. Joshua Tewitt down the other end makes a great play and finishes to bring his team even closer in the, in, on the scoreboard. Five points is the difference now. Could we be in for a blockbuster finish? Onwas along the baseline. Josh Ward here, a great defense. Fraser Malcolm, hand in his face. Does not matter. Right in his eye. Hand in his face and Will Nabel waving the towel behind him, trying to take <laughs> <laughs> Delpash to the corner. Josh Ward-Hibbert 
trying to respond. That's a big time triple there, should we say, from Fraser Malcolm. He does like those corners, though. Let's admit the the play sport arena. You know those, those corners belong to Fraser Malcolm. <laughs> and now Kwade Green splitting the pack, heading to the middle of the floor, and Caledonia open up this game once again. And we're going to take a quick break and come back with you for the final moments of this game. Back to the play sport for the final finish of this game. Ten points, the difference. Newcastle had closed the gap down to five, but Caledonia opened it back up to double digits. 4.52 on the clock. Newcastle ball, still a long way to go. As Jordan Johnson has possession. Bounce pass from Johnson to Del Pesh. Fighting for the boards again. That's out of bounds. And it is a Caledonia ball. Good to see a little bit more fight from Del Pesh. Yeah, I think he's been great today. I think honestly do think he's been a, a bright spark and something that you know Coach Dort can hang his hat on going forward in the for the rest of the year. Um, you know, he's been you know he's been willing to finish around the ring, he's been crashing the glass hard, you know, he's been taking some good defense. So yeah, it's definitely uh, definitely some good news for the Newcastle Eagles. Talk about good news. That man is great news. Quade Green, 31 points now. As McGill fires that one up, foul is called. Two shots to come. He was a judge to be shooting the ball, and he will go to the line. I think Quade Green, <laughs> Quade Green is great news for Caledonia, but terrible news for the Newcastle Eagles. I mean, he's having a great game today, 31 points. You know, we saw... Tevin Ollis in this, you know, earlier on today have 31 as well. It'll be interesting to see if, if Green can get that number up a bit higher. Has he given him three shots in the end? Yeah, I think they would have just conferred with one another to see whether that was a three-point attempt or a two-point attempt. And that's two for two, or two out of two for Ricky McGill. He has got one more to go. And he makes all three, Ricky McGill. Green. Now to Bothwell. Onwas 
Assessing options. Drive into the bucket. Rattles in and out for Onwas. Rebound for Taj Green. McGill. No good. Onwas with the boards. Ricky McGill looking to be very aggressive since he's come back on the floor, but I think it's quite clear that Newcastle Eagles today they need, they're dependent on Jordan, John, Jordan Johnson. The ball needs to be in his hands at the, at the end of the game here. Well, Green has almost turned it over. Moore hands it off. Mike Bothwell. Good for two. 11 point game, three minutes to go. Del Pesh. Nice ball movement from the Eagles. Ricky McGill. No good from the corner, and a foul is called. The foul will be called on Princeton Onwas. Which will be his third personal. As Caledonia rack up the fouls. Fourth team foul that for the Gladiators. comes into play green firing that one up Larry Austin jr. Johnson blocked by on great defense from on Moore more attacking the foe his own rebound everyone fell asleep and more he wanted more on that play but he'll get just two free throws foul called on the foe Here is that defense from Onwas, Dan. That is what he's there for in Caledonia. They know him as a defensive stopper up there. He's always picking up the toughest matchup on the other team. You know, you see it again there. Switches onto Jordan Johnson and makes a great play. You know, and then Clifton Moore down the other end. The, the energy and enthusiasm of a rookie. That's the way I'd describe that play, you know. Didn't stop, went after the ball no matter what, and, and, and got his reward. Well, wherever you're watching, let us know your thoughts on who today's player of the game should be in the YouTube comments live on the British Basketball League YouTube channel, live on TikTok, live on Twitch. Let us know who the player of the game will be for you. There's a few candidates depending on the outcome of this game. Dan Clark will be announcing afterwards who he has selected. Here's Jordan Johnson. Defoe. Fraser Malcolm. Ball moving forward here. Quade Green slows things right down. Use the clock, fellas. Well, I can tell you, Quade Green, 31 points. And the, the dime to find Clifton Moore Jr. with another big slam. Getting it done, 14 points, 15 rebounds. Clifton Moore Jr. Fed, served on a platter by Green. Assist number six for Green. And Moore Jr. makes that happen. Wonderful for the Gladiators as the timeout is called by coach Mark Strutel. Well, I can let you know that 31 points is Quade Green's highest scoring uh, tally. And he's done that already this season once. So if he scores more than that, then it's his career high. I mean, if you look at the averages that he's played at, across his other leagues that he's been involved with it's not been the same he's averaged just under 15 points in mexico uh, 15 points in the dominican republic around 17 points in venezuela but here in the uk he's averaging 27 right now and another 31 point performance maybe even more by the end of the night yeah i mean the level that he's playing at and the level that he's coming at you know take into account that this is a guy that's been sitting at home he hasn't been playing much basketball this year and the fact that he's coming off you know straight off a plane and putting these numbers up is, is very impressive you know and I think it's credit to the you know the, the scouting and the, the recruitment of the Caledonia Gladiators but also credit to Kawade Green you know he's coming ready to play and ready to help this team win games wow they are in the lead by 15 the Gladiators as McGill fires up a triple and another rebound for Clifton Moore.
Green. Commanding the offense. Lost here and a foul called. And that foul, I believe, was called on Ricky McGill. Is what I believe, but he's been substituting nonetheless. I'll let you know when I have confirmation of that. Well, it was Larry Austin Jr. with the foul. There's Quade Green, his all time scoring record across all his disciplines of basketball 33 points. He makes history as Moore comes up with another rebound. If we're looking at this kind of any gladiators team today, it's really hard. Although Quadi Green's had a great game, you know, 33 points, his personal record, you know, his PB. Um, you know, Clifton Moore has been outstanding as well. You know, they've had two great performances there, and you know, it's definitely something that they could be a very dangerous duo going into the end of this final final games of this season. Well, I can tell you that Clifton Moore Jr. has posted his most ever rebound tally. It was 13, his previous one, and that was against the Cheshire Phoenix. But here, at home, he has 16 rebounds in the game. He's made, oh, I should we say 17. That's his record broken for his personal performance. Had a few big scoring performances today, haven't we? A few, and we've had a, a lot of big rebounding performances this week in the, in, the, in the British Basketball League. More there he is again, more junior, Quade Green, dangerous duo, Green and Moore combo, getting the job done. They're combining for points, Moore's got the boards, Green's got the dimes, Caledonia, they're looking just fine, Dan. Yeah, they're looking good, they look really good today. As I said, I don't think it's been their most fluid uh, offensive output, but you know, they've got the job done, you know, they've scored 98 points, you know, a lot of that is on Quade Green and creating for Clifton Moore and creating for Palazer and, and creating for Fraser, Fraser Malcolm in the fourth quarter. But yeah, you know, that's a, it's a solid performance from the Caledonian Gladiators and that's what they need going into the end of the season. I would say a much more composed performance from them. I know they're missing big players, of course, but, you know, they, they've been able to slow things down, get the right looks, get the right reads, and find themselves in great scoring positions. Not good, not contested, great scoring positions. Yeah, and I think that's partly due to and credit to, an, to a point guard like Quade Green. You know, we've seen it a lot of times. Newcastle have ran the floor really well at times, and they've got quick baskets and two or three quick baskets in, in succession, and Quade Green just received the inbound pass and walked the ball out of the court and calmed everyone down and, and made sure they got, as you said, not a good shot, a great shot, and they've done that a lot today. Combined for 51 points. Clifton Moore Jr. and Quade Green. Quade Green is two assists away from his own double-double. Clifton Moore already has 18 points and 17 rebounds and four assists and four blocks. It's going to be a tough choice for the player of the game. Johnson, Whitfield. He'll shoot the three, Whitfield misses that one. Bothwell and Quade Green all alone, hands it off, and there is Fraser Malcolm with the finish on the buzzer. Maybe he was thinking, can I get that double-double? <laughs> it was one assist short, but there you have it. The Caledonia Gladiators defeat the Newcastle Eagles. A wonderful and well-rounded performance from them. Despite their short roster, Dan, they got the job done tonight. They got the job done and they did it in some style in the end. You know, there's some great highlight plays at the end in the, in the end of the fourth quarter there. But Quade Green and Clifton Moore Jr., what a great duo that is. Well, at the moment, it's not showing whether we had that final basket count. Because if it does count, if I'm correct in thinking, it should be 100 to 80. Uh, but we'll get con confirmation to you. I do think the refs uh, yeah, waved the, it off at yeah, the end. Yeah, and the refs have waved it off, so it won't be that scoreline. It's 98 to 80, the score, as Caledonia defeat Newcastle. Right, Dan, fill us in. You get to make the tough decision. Who is the 
MVP of this game? Who is your player of the game? Yeah, as we've said, I mean, there's, it's a tough decision because there's been some outstanding performances on the side of the Caledonia Gladiators today. You know, Clifton Moore, Quade Green. You know, I mean, the index rating for both is outstanding, but I'm going to go with Quade Green. You know, he is that bright spark that the Caledonia, of, Cal Cal Caledonia Gladiators have needed. Obviously, a lot of injuries at the moment, but he seems to be carrying this team forward in the right direction and, you know, finishing off this season strong, and he is some talent for this league. Quade Green getting it on, making a personal scoring record of 33 points, scoring in a variety of ways. He's got handles. He can get underneath the bucket, use his body, and also make the mid-range jump shot. He can make the long-range jump shot. So many tools in his arsenal for scoring the ball, Dan. Yeah, and he's so he's so smooth when he does it as well. It's not as if he's, like you see there, he's just casually dribbling it, casually lulling his defense in, into a sense of security when he's, he knows exactly what he's doing. You know, he's, he seems, he's one of those players that seems to have more time than the rest, and, and that's just down to his quality and his, and his capabilities. Stepping through there on that play, Bucket is good to go for two. Well, Gareth Murray will be happy as Caledonia Gladiators remain in third position in the British Basketball League standings. Uh, let's take a look at the stats then at the end of this one. Dan, what are you seeing here? <coughs> oh, well, that's not the, that's the games for you. There's there the we stats. Go. We've got them right there for you. 98 to 80, the score. We'll just fix that graphic for you with a magic wand. We'll be back with you very shortly, I guess. But, yeah, I mean, we see there. I mean, Newcastle's... Uh, field goal percentage has improved in the second half. A lot of that down to, again, I thought Jordan Johnson was great today. He really tried to carry his team to victory, just wasn't enough. But um, that improved, but Caledonia's defense, you know, you can just see it there on the stats to, from the rebound into the, you know, to the field goal percentage that the Newcastle Eagles had. You know, it's, uh, it was an impressive, you know, defensive uh, output from them today. And then again, 54% from the from two-point range. A lot of that Clifton Moore, you know, finishing around the ring after some great dishes from from Quade Green. So yeah, it's a great performance from from the Caledonia Gladiators. And as we said, you know, after that London game where they where they missed out by six points and missed six free throws, they only missed one today. So that's a great improvement for them. But let's go and have a look at those fixtures and results. You got a quick preview of them earlier, but there they are. This is it, the weekend done, round 22, Sheffield Sharks. They took the victory against the Scorchers. Newcastle Eagles won their first game of the weekend against Manchester. Caledonia lost their first game of the weekend by six against London. Cheshire Phoenix continue to keep the ball rolling. 95 to 73, the score against the Plymouth City Patriots. Bristol, massive win against the Riders. Caledonia, comfortable victory against the Newcastle Eagles. Let's take a look at those standings and how things have potentially changed. Well, the only real change is Bristol Flyers moving up to seventh as Surrey Scorchers sit in eighth. Caledonia uh, with a 17 to 12 record uh, with a two game advantage over Newcastle. And of course, Cheshire Phoenix have a two game uh, cushion, uh, second place over the Caledonia Gladiators. But things once again, still tight in the middle of the pack in the British Basketball League standings. Well, thank you very much if you've joined us for both games or just the one game here this Sunday evening. It's been great to have you with us. Myself, Tahir Hajat, alongside Dan Clark. Make sure you lock in in future games. British Basketball League YouTube channel, live on TikTok, live on Twitch, wherever you're watching around the world. We hope you have a great evening. We'll see you next time.